What goes into my art? Um, describing my art, oh my gosh. First, I have to look at a bunch of art. I'm a really huge fan of Pinterest, secretly. <laughs> um, it's like a guilty pleasure of mine, just filling my brain with all sorts of inspiration. So yeah, it's a combination of Pinterest, Instagram, there's lots of good juicy artists on Instagram, and all the good cartoony kind of psychedelic, freaky, weird stuff um, is my favorite. And um, I really need to go on lots of walks too, like lots of exercise, <laughs> just to get, um, yeah, just the blood flowing and my brain is like fresh and clear. And then I, yeah, I start to make like a rough draft, like a sketch, just kind of, um, get it out of my system first and then I kind of use that rough draft sketch as like the inspo for the final product <laughs> and then yeah and then I just kind of dive into it um, and it changes a lot as I go too um, so it's not like I have uh, a giant plan it needs to be exactly this it kind of evolves as I as I go um, and it surprises me sometimes <laughs> and sometimes it's kind of disappointing but sometimes it's really sweet uh, the way it unfolds so I just kind of let the art do itself a little bit I try to listen to it <laughs> as much as I can my favorite medium is definitely ink on paper just black and white um, I love it I just love the like lots of pointillism and mark making and stuff like that. Um, but I try to paint just to switch it up. Maybe I'll like it better, I don't know. Um, drawing is definitely my favorite. It's my comfort zone. Um, but I think it's important to like push yourself to try to do something that makes you slightly uncomfortable <laughs> or makes you not like your art for a second. So just pedal to the metal and get that painting done <laughs> whether you like it or not. Yeah, my studio space is kind of a disaster <laughs> as well as myself. There's no regular hours. <laughs> it's very uh, when I feel like it and then uh, it'll be months and I don't really make art or it'll be really minimal like just kind of sketching not doing much um, but then once I get started on something it's like every night um, I like nighttime and mornings for art I have a window in my studio and in the morning it just the lighting is really pretty and it's nice to have some coffee and um, listen to some some Patrick Watson or something uh, and slowly work away. I think what motivates and inspires my artwork is even just artists who are involved in the junction. Um, I got a lot of inspiration from Patrick Fernandez, Jess Richter, <laughs> um, lots of people that are involved in this space for sure. Um, and this is really cheesy. I think this is the most Saskatchewan kid thing to say ever, but the prairies really <laughs> inspire me. Um, especially like late fall when some things are thriving and some things are dying. It's a really bizarre, precious time of year that doesn't last very long. And I think that's really cool. And I think sometimes I see that in my art. It's like kind of dying and creepy, but also <laughs> uh alive and uh luxurious or lush <laughs> art has always been part of my life um my mom is an artist my stepdad is an artist so i feel like it just is kind of in my blood or in my upbringing i guess um and it was like the only thing i was good at in school <laughs> so uh that made school cool was art um but I got really disconnected from art after high school. You know, like you're just kind of disconnected from everything, like that uh, limbo of like, who am I? Am I, I an, oh my God, am I an adult or a kid? I don't know. <laughs> um, but then when I started working here at the junction, um, I think that started to fuel and feed that crave a little bit and made me want to do art again and 
exercise that magic a little bit more. Um, so it's been part of my life forever, but there are definitely moments where it kind of fades away a little bit and then I need to revisit it. But I think that goes for everything really. And I think I have too many interests and like little hobbies and stuff. It's hard to do one thing all the time. Like hair is my full-time job. So I think I focus on that a lot and then art kind of gets like pushed to the side a little bit, but depending what time of year it is, <laughs> sometimes I'll dive into it a little bit more. So I guess it's always been part of my life. But now, uh, maybe for the past like three years, I've been uh, living in the art world a little bit more and trying to push myself and figure things out a bit more. So it's like the real art <laughs> making is pretty recent. I like to write a lot too. Um, and sometimes whatever I'm writing will inspire what I create but I'm pretty disorganized like that <laughs> and don't super have a system. It's very like, oh, I think this would look really cool. Let's try this. Um, so I think I just kind of like dive into it and make it happen, really. Would, if someone came to an up, emerging or upcoming new artist, mm -hmm. what advice would you give them? Uh, the advice I would give them would be to not doubt yourself. Even if you hate it, someone else will love it. And it's okay to hate your art sometimes. <laughs> I think it's a really good learning opportunity. And that's happened to me a lot. Like I, I always doubt myself. I don't think I'm very good sometimes. <laughs> but then other people will really like it. And that makes me feel like kind of cool. Like, oh, maybe I should do this for real or put more energy towards it um so yeah don't tell your don't yourself don't do it it's not good <laughs> i always feel like you have to explain your art with a really giant words and a really deep explanation but i don't know i'm all about like if it looks cool that's great awesome it is what it is <laughs> it's all very trial and error <laughs> I guess. But yeah, sometimes it doesn't have to be super deep. I chose this one. Um, it's my favorite right now. I feel like it's the true essence of everything I really like to do. I just really love black and white and lots of details. Like the more you look at it, the more you notice. And I spent a lot of time on this one at Madge Lake actually, outside in the forest. So, um, I just have that memory attached to it. Like, COVID summer kind of sucked, but Madge Lake was really nice just to like escape the wildness that our world is right now. So yeah, I think this piece is my favorite because there's that nice memory of Madge Lake attached to it. And I like that it's creepy. Um, but not so creepy that you don't want to look at it. Like, <laughs> um, it's just kind of whimsical and magic, <laughs> really. <laughs> so I started drawing the face just with pencil. Um, and then, yeah, cause always when I start a piece, I, I get really nervous to start it and don't want to like mess it up. So I'm always a bit hesitant and start with pencil. Um, and I'll draw like the kind of center point of it um, and then I start using pen and then I start to trust myself a little bit more um, and finish it off with pen and uh, markers um, but yeah the finishing point was the black border and then I always end up adding like extra little dots and stuff to just put that extra little magic dust <laughs> onto it so yeah